Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here. Not only how all my adventure is doing. Welcome back to the channel. Oh my god, two videos in a row. Is he being consistent? Maybe, just for now. I'm, I'm, I'm basically Corey Kinchin. I just I just disappeared for like a whole month or a week and then I come back randomly and bless you guys with a video. Then disappear for another week. Anywho. <laughs> Anywho. Welcome back. I am working on the game once again because I, if you guys have been in Discord or kept up with the community tab on the YouTube channel, um, I disappeared from like devlogs for a while just because I thought I found some 3D modelers who can like put my idea to paper for like the 3D tile sets that I wanted. But doesn't seem like that went all that well. <laughs> I had two people finish finish um, tiles, well, small tile sets. They didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. So I'm actually, I actually reached out to one of them. I don't, they never hit me back after that. Just to try like a more cartoonish, you know, tile set, but yeah, never got any, any messages back from that. So I wanted to take a different approach because there are a lot of environmental like creators, well, 3d modelers on Fiverr. I wanted to see if I could create a concept for them to, you know, take in and, you know, build a map for me. But as I am, I am a little bit picky. I will say that. <laughs> I know myself, I am picky. <laughs> so the art style I did want to go with was a little bit close to Pokemon just because like Tau set, Tau base moving, you know, things like that. I wanted to keep it sort of within that area of art style, but I wanted to be a little, little cartoonish in a way. I'm trying to avoid a low poly, even though low, low poly is cheap. But still, I ch I'm trying to avoid it. I don't know if I can, <laughs> but we sh we shall we shall see because low poly plus 3D. Well, plus no low poly plus sprites. 2D sprites doesn't look right, in my opinion. I don't know if I do it right, maybe. But I don't know if I can do it right yet. <laughs> So yeah, what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to be showing you guys the process that I go through when getting all these concepts so I can give it to like somebody on Fiverr. So the things I normally do is I just go on Google, look through it, search for references of something that looks cool. So if I'm looking for like hair for a monster girl, I'm going to go into Google type in anime hairstyles. I'm just going to scroll through it and start digging deeper. And I'm not just going to pick the first thing that's on the page. Let's, let's show an example. So I'm not just going to be like, I'm going to pick the first thing here. No, I'm going to dig deeper. I'm going to go into the little webs down here and keep on going until I started going into like newer things. I'm just going to keep on going through pages after pages until I start finding more unique stuff. I'm just going to keep on going. Then I'll just keep going through because new things are going to keep popping up every time I look through them. See that that looks cool. I can just keep going through. Yeah, that's normally how I look for everything. You know, try and try and put in a little bit more detail things. Either that or I would just put in female hairstyles and I would just get something from, you know, the real world as a reference. So that's one way that I deal with that. So for, um, Let me just go ahead and close some of this stuff. That's how I'm currently not working on the game since we're doing doing this stuff. 
But uh, yeah. But currently, I am going to be doing the main map concept. To be more precise, we're going to be doing the village because I do want it to still be somewhat of a tile based, you know, look and feel. Sort of like how Pokemon is, you can tell it's tile based because you can move in between squares and stuff like that. I want it to be s near that level, which I'm going to have to explain. So I always bring out a notepad that has a crap ton of details in. So yeah, I always keep these details all together and I just compile them and get as much information in there as I can. So I go the extra miles when it comes to like monster girl designs. If I can, if my brain gets blockage, normally the artists will compensate for that <laughs> and help me out a little bit. So yeah. So with that said, it's not easy to do this, I will say that, but um, hmm. I guess you guys will be on the road with me through this just to see how long it normally takes me to um, compile all this stuff and the normal, normally how much detail I try and put in it. So first things first, we do have images for the player house and the rival house, the gill hall, but I think I want to take out. I've been thinking about it for a while. I think I want to take out the guild hall and put it in a different place because it wouldn't make any any sense to put a guild hall inside of an island that that really wouldn't have like too much adventurers. It's like, why would you have a guild hall for a single island instead of like a massive capital or something like that? So I went through that and I was thinking to myself, yeah, let's let's do something a little bit different for that. Uh, let's see if I can find my tile sets. I can't show my monster girl files just because I don't I don't want to ruin anything. You know, <laughs> don't want to ruin any secrets here. What's this? Isn't this the grass? Yeah, we're going to use this as a base. We're going to use this grass as a base. <laughs> Even though that looks weird. But here we have the player house. Uh, I'll probably have them redesign the player house. We're just using this as concept, like I said. Then we have the rival house down here. Uh, I would normally name it. This is going to be a little bit of trial and error. I probably will flesh this out as I go. Oh, I thought I copied it and, co and pasted it. Did I not? Okay, fair enough. not. Hold on. We're just going to do this in. This will be Zen's house. And to be honest, I was thinking about it. I could, I could have a farm down here. It would make sense to have a farm just because, uh, how do I explain it? You know what? First things first, let's go ahead and look for a quest board because I th I thought to myself a quest board would be would make a lot more sense 
instead of a guild hall. Well, I should put in transparent. That would make more sense. You guys weren't supposed to see any of those designs. Don't worry, those are those are secrets. You guys, you guys get that little sneak peek. <laughs> Otherwise, keep keep the fuck out of my folder. Anyhow, <laughs> I'm gonna save it in downloads. And now, gonna come back over. And we'll have this quest board that people can just take quests off of. Just the village quests. That, that's what we could have. Like I said, these, these are placeholder things. People could actually come up with better designs because that's normally how... Ooh. Whoops, I didn't think it was going to grab that too. There we go. Because a lot of these fiber people I hire, I tell them to do something similar, but be unique with it. So they normally do their own thing and create something better. Then I can, then they normally give me the chance to actually go back and add feedback to that. I always like to name these things. Quest board. Whoops. Obviously, we're gonna add more detail to this. We're, this is this is not gonna be just everything. Now there is a thing that I did want to do I uh, instead of doing like instead of adding like things like fly in a game I wanted the player to experience more of the magic side of the game I could make a spell called teleport but that's that's just kind of like eh I could make a teleport spell or I can make it a little bit more interactable with the world and have waves waste stones. So it's kind of like I can have like a teleporter right here as an example. I can go to this and then I can teleport to any major city that I've been to. And I was thinking to myself, I can also have like little altars around the world that I can teleport that you can teleport to, but it's like a one way teleport to those stones. And once you get there, you have to find another you know, way, well, way stone altar, teleporting altar, stuff like that. Just to immerse the player and, you know, not have them like skip around a little bit too much and avoid too much gameplay. I could do that, but I could also make the teleport. Who knows? These are just, these are just things in the head. All right. They're not said and done. It's just, once I start getting into it, I'll have a better idea of what I want to do and what I want to change. So quest board. So as I'm doing this, I actually get to have like concept in my head of things that I want to do. Um, I can also go back through like order. Uh, but actually, oh, I know where it is. Uh, so I can also start going back through like odor files and picking up a lot of the odor like downloads that I had for concepts. Because I, I guess I can show art for like the rival concept. 
it would make more sense to do that <laughs> if I still have the folder. Well, if I still had the image that I used, well, I gave them as concept art. I already have a lot of the story in my head. So we're going to try to stick towards this village, okay? <laughs> I don't want to give away too much, but let's just say I have a lot of things in mind. So it's either between having a quest board or, or a request house. Either that, or we can do the classic lab or inn or tavern. Or beginner tavern, something like that, actually. Okay, I don't have that original image that I used as concept that I that I know of. I probably deleted it. It's, it's been a long time since I actually used that. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, actually, I think if I go back on like one of my older like Fiverr, Fiverr orders, I think I can find the concept art that I used. It would actually be a lot easier to do that instead of just poking around my PC. That's a great thing about Fiverr, dude. You, you, you have like so much stuff that's saved for you so you can go but all the way back on let's see let's see let's see Oof, I just thought about it. I probably got to get through my inbox because I normally DM DM people all my stuff. Hold on. I'm nearing what I need. God damn it. I forgot I actually talked to him a lot. Oh yeah, this was the original art for like the guild, the guild house that I use as concept. There is one of them. <laughs> no, that was the guild house I used. Player start. Here it is. Player starting house. The player starting house was supposed to be looking something similar to this. Just a rundown shack. We could put that there instead. Because it's better to have the concept art there and they could actually like, you know, take their own concept from it. Huh, that's that's annoying. I actually cannot find the rival house. I found the starter house, but I can't find the rival house. Oh no, here it is. I'm blind. Don't don't mind me. Yeah. That was an example. Wait, what?
have ways of fixing that. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, these these houses right here actually look like something extremely similar to what I to what I wanted. Okay, <laughs> a little bit better in a way. Just because, like I said, this is a rundown village and everything. So the next thing is that this village is supposed to have a beach area to where fishermen go. So here's the deal. I'm going to need to move. This, well, no, this and this. A little bit up. Just because, like I said, it's an island, so I, I technically have to do this. It would make sense for, you know, a deserted island to have like a beach area. And something else I wanted to do was have like a questing system that actually, you know, kind of helped out with player experience. Uh, oh yeah, sand, 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 sand. Uh, let's use something that I actually use like that actually looks like sand. <laughs> I know this is messy, all right? This doesn't look like normal things, but I do, like I said, I do write out details, as much details as I can after I get concepts. <laughs> So this is going to have to come up just a little bit more just because I have to add water here.
So let's go look for water towel. We're just going to use this as an example. <laughs> and you guys might be thinking to yourself, dude, no, no person is going to understand this. Trust me. I've, I've sent people worse and they have done some incredible shit. So like I said, the rival area is not going to be the only thing there. Um, uh, it's, it's still between the tavern. A tavern or a lab. You know what? A researching house actually wouldn't be bad. A bad idea. This dog actually works as a placeholder. Ah, well, never mind. Not if somebody doesn't actually actually turns it into a fucking um uh, transparent. That was only helpful. Thanks for any whoever whoever did that one. <laughs> I always appreciate your help. <laughs> really appreciate you. I'm actually gonna have to move that text over. Actually, is there is there any just thought about something that would actually make a lot of sense actually no would it hmm i was gonna add like cliff sides just surrounded by cliffs just to keep the villagers in or we can have like a wooden wall to keep the villagers in and separated just because you know it kind of keep it like they're trying to keep the monster girls out stuff like that that also could be a thing That's how I knew I didn't spell that right. I was saying, like, Google will fix that. We're just going to use that. 
Yes, we're using the stock image, okay? Don't don't question me. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> okay, yeah, of course. Of course the stock image is going to be a freaking Web P. This is probably the most scuff thing you guys have ever seen. But trust me, it makes it weirdly for some reason makes more sense to an uh, artist than it does most people. <laughs> yeah. Why I say that is because think to yourself, if you made if you made like a concept art, well. If you wanted concept arts, what would you do first? Would you just send them a random image and just be like, hey, do something like this. They can easily do that. That's the thing. They can they can easily do that. And you can be like in the most vague way and they'll take their own spin off of it. Uh, as for example, like an artist that took like their own spin off of it. I was actually very vague when I was like starting out using Fiverr and actually the images you guys see for the house was a result of that. And that actually turned out very well when I was using those 2D images, that's the thing. I mean, like I said, this, this rundown shack was basically, uh, where is it? Was this as a player home? Like they'll take like anything you put and give it to them and they'll make their own unique thing out of it. And if it fits, it fits, or you can request them to do something different. There's revisions for a reason. It's just like, nah, I don't want something like that. I want it to be a little bit more sim similar to what I gave you, something like that. But this is actually what I had uh, kind of detailed to to my tile set artist, something that I I wanted it to be like more run down for the player. And for the rival, I wanted it to be a little bit better and bigger. Sort of basically showing that you're <laughs> that you do start out in a poor way. I thought about adding like I guess house purchasing, you know, stuff like that. Thought about it. Have have I decided if I actually want to do that yet? No. <laughs> but that was back when I didn't know jack crap about like Fiverr and I was just getting into it. So that so to be honest those tile sets ended up like that just because I had no experience using fiber. Now I'm, I'm actually able to deal detail everything out and actually get people, you know, 
on the right track of what I actually want. Hmm. That's the thing. Normally in Pokemon, there's always like three houses, right? But this ain't Pokemon. This is my game. Hmm. So I could put a researcher or no, I could put a. I was thinking of like a little storage house over here where there's NPCs bringing like luggage and everything or crates over to this area. Just add a little bit of immersion. I could do that. Just have like somebody. Actually, that is an NPC idea I can do. Just have like a dude, like one of the workers having a crate and, you know, you battle him and he shows up with a crate in his hand. That's an NPC I can do. Just like simple things like that. I can actually, I can actually do. I think a lot about this stuff. Okay. Don't, don't judge me. <laughs> Oh no, it's about the storm. That's not good. <laughs> My video. <laughs> Actually, it would be it would make more sense to add and gate. We're going for simplistic things right now. If anything, the first thing I want to build on with the terrain artist is the area. So for me, I still want it to kind of be, you know, like squared tile set looking wise. So I kind of do want the village to be probably 20 by 20 or 40 by 40 when it comes to like the size of the area. Then I can see what I'm actually working with. Then I can work with either another artist. Actually, I could probably do this myself for like the basic terrain. But the thing is trying to find the right textures and everything is going to be the most difficult part which I can use a different unity project and we can play on that later. I can at least give this. Actually, I can have this as concept art for myself and seeing what I need to do and what I want to do. Huh? Making this video actually gave me a lot more insight of what I want to do. I'm actually happy with this. I do want like a little huh? I want like a little cliff side here. Hold up. I want like a little cliff side here to where there is like a rock side. Damn it. How do I explain it? Uh, you guys know how Pokemon has those little ledges you can jump down. Kind of like that. I want, I want those little ledges here, but I want it to be like the grass is like higher. This is like a higher plane and the sand is like a lower one. That's kind of what I'm thinking in my head of what I want for obvious reasons. <laughs> hmm. Is there even any tile sets?
Yeah, yeah, sort of like this. That's what I'm talking about, like a higher plane, and I want there to be steps. That's a good example. Hmm. Excuse me. That is actually a great example that I was thinking of. I wonder if I can actually use this. Hold on a second. I have used like Photoshop for a long ass time. <laughs> Thank you, high school. <laughs> You guys can tell that I'm having a lot of fun with this, right? <laughs> yeah, you guys can probably tell. So, let's do... I have been wanting to get into more Photoshop stuff again. Yeah, I can get into the logo stuff, maybe. Damn, now it doesn't look right when I do it like that. Actually, I can do it the good old Pokemon way. Can I change my racers shape? Yeah, I can, but I don't think I have this stuff for it. Yeah, I don't have the actual, like... Eraser and stuff like that for that. Whoops, whoa. You good, buddy? Go back. Okay, we just got to. Just got to be careful with this. <laughs> We're gonna do it the good old towel set way. This is going to take a little bit longer, but like I said, it, it works okay. <laughs> it's just going to take me a while to learn Unity. That, that's the only issue, is that Unity has like a pretty big learning curve that I have to learn and get into. So now we can do well, this. Merge, copy, well, duplicate. I think we made that a lot easier on ourselves. <laughs> we don't talk about the struggle that went on here, okay? <laughs> This is, this is between me and you. You, you tell nobody else. I have to have a long talk if you do. Okay, so... Uh... Example. A little step. actually works as as what I'm looking at but that actually works too
Actually, that works out for wooden steps. Uh, save that. Let's go back to the project. Wait, where did I save it? Oh, there it is. I was about to say, oh no, <laughs> I've lost it already. It only took me like 10 seconds to lose it. <laughs> okay, instead of just erasing it, I can. Okay, never mind. We got trying to do that, do it that way is really tedious. Oh yeah, that's also because I haven't placed it either. Eh, let's just erase it. <laughs> Stop being lazy. <laughs> So normally your uh, Fiverr artist will also like, well, any Fiverr like seller you work with would also talk to you. Well, any good sellers will actually talk to you about the designs and everything and ask you a lot of questions and what do you want or, you know, keep you updated, give you sketches, things like that. Sort of like how the new artist that I have working under me does. They make several sketches before they actually go through like the actual like detailings and everything. They show me like different color palettes as well, which I love them for because my other artists that I've hired and have never done shit like that. And I was just sitting like, ooh, I like this person. Maybe it's because they're under the game section. <laughs> it makes more sense. And I will say this, that artist also delivers a lot faster than the other artists I've hired because they're also dazzling inside a game. So I will say this game artists get out a lot more images or anything character wise a lot faster than anybody who does like normal images for like VTubers, things like that way quicker. So if you guys are making a game, go with any developer. Well, any uh, gigs that have game in it like game characters i'll make you a game character i'll design a game character anything that says game character npc etc go with them if you're making a game and avoid anybody who's just making art for like i guess vtubers or anything like that if they're like mostly dedicated to one like thing and not related to video games it's probably safer to avoid that. I've realized that now because like I said, I had a mono studio for a while and they go on a lot of vacations because, you know, they're just, I'm pretty sure that's just their, their gig, their normal thing. That's their, this is their side hustle. They're not as into it as others. And plus I've also learned one other thing that if you work with VTube or any other like artist that isn't related to games, most of the time they have like the person who draws it, then they hire a colorist. For some reason, this is actually a huge thing on Fiverr is for people to hire a colorist while you draw. And it makes sense because it's kind of like you draw everything then the colorist, you just send it all over there instead of you just doing everything in one go. That makes sense. But for the game section of the artists, I've noticed that they do it all by themselves. Well, most of them do it all by themselves. They don't have a team and they get it out a lot faster because you're going through two people who have a two different schedules or typings of like whatever the fuck they're doing. And I was thinking to myself, 
hmm, I should definitely start going back to the game side of this. <laughs> Which, like I said, was a good choice on my, on my, uh, part. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm stupid is what I'm saying. I, I probably sh shouldn't have gotten their hopes up into working with me. Uh, transparent huts. Uh, fantasy huts. I could use this as like basic houses. Let's go back and look at this. Because it'll make more sense to have other housing. Instead of just having these two guys and just a village full of NPCs running around with no houses type of thing. Um, just just for the immersion of it. That's that's basically what I'm saying. And as for a game, you want your house and a rival house to stand out and be important versus, you know, just any other houses. You want the important houses to look different from all the other like average common houses. I've actually been going around playing a lot of games, learning like map design from each of oh, God damn it. Another, another person who, you know what? Fuck you guys. How dare you <laughs> every time with you? <laughs> but yeah. I've been playing a lot of games going around learning like learning like map design, see how everybody else does it. Oh yeah, I normally do this. And I can delete it. There we go. How do I do this? Did I grab it on the side like this? Okay, there we go. Then let's duplicate this. I might have lost my train of thought during the whole conversation. I apologize if I did. <laughs> ADHD is a bitch, okay? <laughs> but like I said, you guys will see a lot of modern stuff come into play. It's like it, it won't just be Huh. Do I want this to be the research house? Actually, yeah, that would make more sense. But I don't I, I don't think I'm going to like send this to like an actual person yet. I will see you send them actually research house 
But yeah, I, I will probably send them this only if, you know, just to give them a feel of like what's going to be going on there. This is mostly now just for me to remember and detail how I'm like going to be doing this. Uh, let's do an outer glow just for that text. I'll say if I can't, if I can't do this, this Photoshop stuff when doing it for years and making thumbnails, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> Paste. So this is a good way to actually like keep concept in your head, like planning, planning out your maps and everything. Actually, it's only funny because my dumbass was thinking to myself, I'm going to make a map just for like concept. That's how this whole video started. And now look at it. <laughs> now, now it's mostly useful for me. Now I don't even know what the title of this video. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Crazy. So, um, I could add stone pathing, but it, it depends on like how I'm going to add it though. But I don't think I really have to worry about that as of right now until I fully learn Photoshop. Well, not Photoshop, Unity. And it's like designing and not messing up every single fucking thing that I have available to me. <laughs> now that, that would suck. So I'm going to be playing with Unity a lot this week. But as of right now, I'm going to be going a little bit more into designing. Well, not designing, coding. I'm going to be doing coding a lot more on the weekdays and on the weekends i'll be playing around with like actually designing stuff and getting like the basic concepts maybe i'll find some assets and i'll probably like play around with it maybe instead of a separate project that would actually seem a lot more helpful um so i could have miscellaneous things like burrows stuff like that hold up I just thought about it. I was talking about like a shack, right? You guys understand that you guys don't understand like i have so many ideas that just fucking go through my head <laughs> and i it's hard for me to put them on paper most of the time it, it sucks No, 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 no. I wanted to do negative. Uh, what was the tab for negative? I thought it was shift. Apparently not.
Yeah, that, that was, that's the weird thing. I don't remember, like, that. I don't really have a reason to use the selection tool, like, too often. Oops. Shit. Bring it back. At best, I could just do that. Delete that. Like I said, it's a concept art for myself. For myself now. <laughs> Like this. I actually have a story idea I can do with this rundown shack down here. Ooh, I actually got a good idea for this rundown shack. I'm not going to say it here, though. I'm going to save that as a secret. <laughs> Actually, players normally don't like walking left. I've I've thought about that. They normally don't like walking left when it comes to like certain places. I don't know why. For some reason, our head is just like, we mostly like to go right. At least that's me. <laughs> um, Let's do like a more... Actually. have a better idea for the rundown hut. It won't be in this area. It'll be somewhere else on the island. Outside the village. I have an idea. <laughs> this video will also help me with that idea, just in case I forget that idea. <laughs> okay. Actually, this dude, my brain's going off and on if I actually want to send this to a person, but it will help them understand. Actually, I can get oh, actually, like I said at the start, I can actually get concept out of this concept art. I could give this to somebody and they would make an actual really good concept out of it. This would make more of a good storage looking house, though. This would make for a good docks if I actually wanted like a boat yard. But let's not go with a boat yard approach. It's quite a lot of concepts that look interesting here. But I do want to save this just in case, just so I don't lose it and all the sauce that's here. But yeah, I was thinking about a barn just, you know, just to go to as a starter, like they send you here with like, you know, a farmer taking care of like some of the monster girls or the domestic monster girls or tamed just for a tamer to, you know, come choose them or something like that it would make sense for that that's what I, it was at least in my head
I'm gonna go with the storage idea that I had. Oh, okay, I thought it was like way lower than it needed to be. Uh, for some reason that that C does not. Okay, I was about to say that C does not capitalize. I actually have a lot of purpose for this because now that I'm actually like thinking this out, I actually have an idea of how I want to make these videos. Oops. Like I said, it's going to be a small village. <laughs> hmm. I don't know why. I kind of want something right here. Because it, it kind of feels too empty right here. Actually, we could add a tavern. But it would kind of be weird to have the tavern right here out of everything. Just because I want to think about this like lore wise or from like a fantasy perspective. Would you really want your tavern to be at the walls, a defensive wall? Or would you rather it be more inside? And I was thinking to myself, maybe I want to add a wall through here too to keep out like any water monster ghosts as well. Or just have like, I guess we could have magic sigils too. That could also be a thing. Hmm. Or I could do the idea I had and have an altar for the teleportation. This actually helps me brainstorm things here now. <laughs> Uh, so if you guys have any anything like to add to this, you guys are free to help. I don't mind any comments that will actually improve like mapping and everything. But I do want to start making like mis miscellaneous items. I just can't add it to this map right here just because it's just like it'll be cluttered from that point. It's like if if I can actually get all of this going. That would be fantastic. 
It's just that if I get a terrain maker, I or an environment maker, I would have to find a modeler that can do very impressive work and, you know, keep the art styles constant and, you know, have it complement each other. Like if I have somebody make like a asset, let's say an asset house and it doesn't fit like the terrain and it looks weird and off putting, that's the issue I run into and I want to try and avoid. So that's going to be something I have to look into and, you know, kind of talk with some people on, which is going to be quite a fucking interesting, <laughs> quite a fucking interesting. Ah, and plus, I'm gonna have to figure out like how they're gonna do it because I want them to do it like, like this, like square shape. But the thing is, I also <sighs> it's the whole adaptive thing, the whole adaptive towels towel that we did like in one devlog, to where if I walk through this gate. Well, if I'm inside of the town here, this part of the map that would be up here is a part. Oh, how to explain this? Okay, we went through a dancing map, but uh, <laughs> English, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so we went through like a devlog of learning adaptive mapping, which was basically if I'm inside of this area. Anything that is connected to this area shows up. So let's say there's a box right here. And let's say there's a box up here. So this there's two boxes, one right here, one right here. And if I was to walk inside of this, this map po pops up. But if I was to walk back in the village, the very top one would disappear. That's what's in my head right now. How am I going to make this island accessible and actually look well put together instead of it looking like very scuffed and weird? That, that's why I've been playing a lot of games and just looking around. I've been playing a lot of like RPG games and looking around, seeing like how their map design is like complementing each other. Or I can have somebody make the whole island itself. But frame rate is a thing. If I add too much, there's too much frames. If I add in just a little, who who knows what could go on there. So I could keep making this video until I have the full island done. Then I can give it to them to where they'll be like, OK, here's the concept. I'm seeing what he's going for and I can make this island shape. Then we can start working on assets and I could go back and look through all this. And we'll also have somebody who can probably make like a in-game map. And it will have them whole map an island and show where you are if I wanted to add like a compass to it. So that that's also something else I could do. So that's the issue with, that I'm going to be running into when I'm doing this. I mean, I could also do the whole RPG maker thing is when I walk out, I go into a new area and for completely forget about the whole adaptive map and have it just be. Actually, I could do that. That would actually make it somewhat easier, actually, because I could walk out and it transports me to a whole different section instead of it being adaptive. Yes, I want it to be seamless, you know, less loading, the better. But immersion wise, you wouldn't want to just like completely tank it and just be like, all right, I can walk over here. There's walls and stuff like that. But here's the thing. I can start placing a whole bunch of boundaries and everything here as well and keeping the player on a set path or give them a lot more freedom and illusion that the that the island is a lot bigger than it is 
and has a lot more secrets to it if I just transport them to the next map and have the next map like way bigger and just having like little places they can go instead of it being adaptive. So this whole town could be something different. Then I can do an adaptive mapping towards like different areas. Or I could just, like I said, have the teleport. Like if I want to do routes, that could be adaptive easy. But as of right now, I don't want, think I want the island to have adaptive. Now that I'm actually thinking about it a little bit more. So this, this has actually been great to do. I'm not going to lie. How long has it been? It's been an hour and I've brainstormed quite a bit of like paths I can go down when it comes to this. But the reason I was thinking of a tavern is because I have to think about um, if adventurers or travelers come here, you know, traders want to rest. I can actually put a tavern right here. I can also probably have a barracks. But then again, I also could make the rival family. They're basically guards and everything. Hmm. Actually, there's a lot of things I could do here. Because I could turn some of the NPCs into guards that patrol the forest and keeping everybody safe on the island. That could also be a thing that I could do. Just to change this to five. I'm gonna save this. Just in case. Um hmm. Originally I'm thinking of that is but back to the tavern idea but um the only reason i'm thinking of that is just because maybe i can add an npc that you know tells tales and gets you excited for the world outside that can also be a thing i could do so let's look up a tavern concept fantasy tavern And a little bit of lore is that the village that you're in, I want it to re reflect more of like medieval. Like you guys are kind of out of touch with the rest of the world. So that's how you're going to kind of start out. And I kind of lead you into the more modern world. And you guys will actually see a lot of more modern things because this whole world is still back in the fantasy medieval magic days, but there are certain like places that have been exposed to like more modern futuristic places. And I will tie that into the story. I already have it planned out. I have ideas for it. It's just putting it into the game on paper is yeah. <laughs> going to be fucking annoying. <laughs> But 
yeah. Now, that gives you a reason why I've just only been looking up fantasy things for this area. But you'll see things like refrigerators. That's that's not medieval. <laughs> they normally hang them up on like dry drying racks, stuff like that. That's actually a good idea. Good concept of art for a, a tavern. I kind of want to keep that. I actually like that design. Actually, there's a lot of interesting tavern designs in here. This is more of the classic tavern that I was thinking of at first. But uh, what about in? Nah, let's go back to the tavern. <laughs> huh. The tavern design is going to be... Let's put a building. Maybe that will help out with more, like, actual houses. I gotta remember that I don't want stairs because like figuring out how to get well if they touch the stairs like here's the here's the thing I was thinking to myself it's gonna be tedious to like get sprites up the stairs if they're sprites <laughs> and from what I've heard trying to like get sprites up slopes or any like thing up like stairs is a nightmare that's why they put like an invisible little slope that they can go up so i could do that but i will also have to make sure my character's size is correct so the issue is i'm gonna have to make sure sizing of houses and everything is perfect and meets you know the player size and everything now if it's a big building i want it to stay a big building but i don't want it to be like me having to resize so much of it so it can fit inside of there then be smaller than a building that's supposed to be smaller than the tavern shit like that let's say this is supposed to be gigantic but i have to size it down so the player can walk upstairs or walk and be connected as soon as they get to the stairs and then i have this building that towers it when it's supposed to be a lot smaller. I'm going to have to do that. I kind of don't. I'm, I've am i been kind of thinking to myself. I don't want to do. Like the towel based movement. I kind of want to do more. Diagonal business going on. More freedom. Of movement. But the issue with that is. If I want to do that. I would have to do the classic characters walking right. Well, when they're walking like diagonal, they're walking right <laughs> upwards, which was always weird. Like you're be walking diagonal, but your character still has the walking right animation as you're walking upwards. You know, I could have that or I could pay extra to have multi-directional sprites that can walk around in any, any direction. But here's the thing, I, I already have it set up that way, but I can have it changed, but I kind of still want to have sprites, well, the NPCs inside of a tile based movement. So I'm not sure how that's going to interact if I do take that out. I don't think it's going to hurt anything, but I'm pretty sure the NPCs aren't going to react really nicely to it. That's for sure. <laughs> They're going to be like, what the fuck are you doing, sir? <laughs> But the thing is with the stairs, I thought to myself, it'll be easier if I just set like a waypoint at here 
and if the player touches the stairs they automatically just enter the end instead of just dealing with the whole stair situations that would seem a lot easier to deal with at least See, that, that looks more like a tavern I was thinking of. It's just like an alcohol, like, sign on it. That's, that's what I was thinking of, but there really isn't much concept for that. See, this is the issue I started running into. The concepts that I'm thinking of, I can't really make too much out of it. Ah, maybe if I take away transparent. Maybe that will help. <laughs> yeah, there we go. My dumbass. That will definitely help a lot more if I just stop looking up transparent things. It's kind of weird. Like a road mixed with that. Just like driving roads, like roads you actually drive vehicles on. But then again, I can't talk with what I'm making. <laughs> I actually can't talk with what I'm making. Do I want that though? Hold on, let's let's look a little bit more. Like I said, I'm not trying to rush or anything. This is literally how long it takes me to do things and make like concept art and like get my brain going for ideas for the game. And it's only been like an hour and a half this this is all I do is I brainstorm and come up with ideas if you guys want more videos like this do let me know because you guys can help me with the first area the starting area then from there once I find like the correct artist the um, 3d modelers and stuff like that I can start doing my own thing from there and you know started making it like more of a surprise type thing but creating the first area is crucial for everybody to explore then I can just give it to like I can just start like putting out information to like um, the modelers or the environment modelers and they can start doing spins on it. Then I can show it to you guys. And you'd be like so freaking surprised and shocked. No, I'm just like, oh my God, dude, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Whoops. Wrong thing. Where'd he go? Here it is. From what I've seen from like people making maps, it, they've actually been pretty cheap. I would say the highest I've seen most of the time is like a hundred dollars. Uh, let's put this on. There we go. Hold on. So, let's see. I'm saying that. But let's go to actual Fiverr and see. Oh no, don't tell me I have to log in. Three day environment. Uh, game.
Yeah, some of them have been pretty cheap from what I've seen. Yeah, I've maxed up to like a hundred dollars. What this guy makes is not half bad, to be honest. To be honest, this is the style I'm kind of looking for. Kinda. Kinda, 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 kinda. I'm adding you. Uh, to this. <laughs> I'll come back and look at that later because I'm not logged in on uh, Opera. This guy actually makes some decent stuff. I would actually have to message him and see. Oh, okay. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, they started going up a little bit higher. Yeah, this is this is what's going to happen when I have to if I actually have to start the Patreon. This, this is what we get into. <laughs> this is what we truly start getting into. But I do like this art style. It's just that that that's just out of my pockets. <laughs> Too far out of my pockets. This is what I was trying to avoid is low poly. But to be honest, it it's not too bad. At least the, the dungeon part isn't too bad. It's just I'm trying to avoid this type of thing because it just looks weird with 2D sprites. That's where I'm trying to avoid. Like, I'm not trying to do realistic. Realistic just looks very freaking weird with a uh, 2D sprites. Uh, I'm just here to show you guys like a little bit of prices and everything. That's just an artist. Hmm. Normally, so <laughs> oh god, <laughs> my <laughs> hiccups. Jesus Christ. Normally, um, dang, that hiccup made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> oh, yeah, normally some of them catch my eye like pretty quickly, but I also just like file a request up here. I don't think it shows that. Yeah, it doesn't. I normally just file a request, put in the information that of people I'm looking for and normally they message me trying to take up the offer. Ooh, hold on. To be honest, this low poly doesn't look that bad. So like I said, this is where prices start going, coming in. But this is 2D background. That's the cheapest for 2D background. Like if I'm trying to make like a whole map, that that's what price I'm looking at. I'm starting to get into the 500s, the 200s, the 600s, stuff like that. So that's why if I learn how to do the basic like map creating myself, just getting the assets designed is a lot cheaper. <laughs> That's for damn sure, because 3D model. Yeah, the assets are normally a lot cheaper if I want them detailed or non detailed. Well, detailed or low poly. Because I can have houses, props, stuff like that made. If I like want tents, certain items made, I can do that. It'll be a lot cheaper on, like I said, on my end. But uh, yeah, uh, that's the thing. I got to start learning that stuff now if I actually wanted to, you know, get to that. Ah, 
which seems like I'm going to have to learn Blender and actually gain some skills. <laughs> Or I can find somebody who's just going to make me like the actual like basics of it. Or like I said, I can go back to searching for tile sets creators. Then I can have the basic tile sets that I can put down and, you know, walk around and then start ordering assets. To be honest, VR people who make V VR chat worlds are extremely great for that too and this one actually isn't half bad the only issue is that for folios okay so it does actually have a portfolio i was gonna say if you don't have like actual like work that you've done that's a major issue that doesn't make me want to touch like new artist stuff. I don't think that's wait, what? So if you don't have more than this, it it kind of it kind of really doesn't give me too much information and I don't know what I'm getting. That's why I'm like skeptical to go into it to any Fiverr people out there. Put more work out into your portfolio. Show more stuff. You know, we need to know what we're getting when we order from you. This is how you drag us in. This down here is how you really get us. If you only have like two images of the same thing, we don't trust that. And so you have to have way more to get us to get us in. But uh, anywho, <laughs> we did do a little bit of side tracking, <laughs> just showing you guys prices and everything. That that's basically what I've been dealing with when I've been looking around Fiverr for at these like three D modelers and everything. It's just been like, ooh, dude, that's kind of rough. Like trying to look through something and experiment because sometimes they can turn out good. Sometimes they can turn out shit and you just wasted money on things you, you won't use. And that happened, you know, quite a bit of times you would think to yourself, dude, you could just get a refund. No, mm, no, that's probably like the most scumbag thing you can do. Like they, they took time out of their hard, out of their day to make that, you know, I mostly like just, you know, leave a review if they don't, you know, keep constant communication with me. That's already a red flag and you already get lose start losing points for me on that. If you if you don't start communicating with me and, you know, showing me like your progress over time, not like every single day, just over time, just asking me questions, because if you send me the final stuff without communicating with me, that's automatically like two to three stars. Doesn't matter in like how good it is. If you don't communicate with me, we already have an issue. <laughs> That's normally how it always is, because people do feel like they've they're being scammed or something like that. It, people overthink, you know, jump to the worst conclusions. Just keep that in mind. But um, like I was saying, <laughs> if you guys have anything you want to add or would be cool to add, let me know because like I said, this is, this is placeholder things, placeholders. This is just experimental shit for like actual maps for when we get done with creating the basic part of the game. This is future shit. I just wanted to show you guys how long it takes, how much my brain just overthinks things and concepts and ideas that I can get you guys to interact with as well because player feedback is a thing that I wanted I want to like you know touch on so always add in your two cents if you think there's too many houses there you go if you think there's if you think the area should be a little bit bigger and have like more of an actual like town which 
I think the village thing would be a lot better, though. And just have like a few families here that you deal with. And just the whole community will help with the starter island and the fantasy is beyond the walls that are, that are going on here. See, you guys were looking at it as I was just doing like this standard stuff at, at start. Now look at it. It looks like an actual like, you know, concept. <laughs> at first, I'm going to I'm not going to admit it. it did look like bullshit, but you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> With that said, um, yeah, any feedback would be great. Um, if you guys want more of this going on, do let me know and we can do even more areas, but I'm not going to show you guys any secret areas or puzzles or anything like that of ideas that I have because I have a shit ton of them and cool designs that I want to get out there as soon as possible, but most of the monster girls that I am going to be putting inside of the poles sooner or later are not going to be on a starter island. It wouldn't make it wouldn't make any sense to put some of the monster girls on starter island. Now, if we're going through testing, they will be on the island. But after like a couple of tests, they will not in on release. If I ever get to a release. <laughs> They will not be on the start island because some of them just wouldn't make sense to be there. Um, I have a lot more like ideas that I do want to put out there. Uh, I do want to make the start island like pretty big though. So that's why I was talking about the whole, you know, adaptive thing and Adaptive versus just like warping to another piece of the map and having that map just, you know, just its own thing over time and, you know, just jumping between us. That's kind of where I'm at with this, you know, but um, yeah, if you guys have any ideas or anything extra to add, any like miscellaneous objects that you want to see like I guess street poles um maybe like a merchant shop somewhere <laughs> just brainstorm some ideas you know put some ideas out there and I will actually think about all of that as we're going through the devlogs so with that said uh tomorrow I will more than likely be starting on the loading and saving function of the game. That doesn't sound like fun, but you know, we have to do that. But uh, here's the thing with the saving and loading. I don't want to do just like one single save. I want to do like multi save up to like, I guess, five or 10 save slots. That's kind of what I want to do. But as of right now, it's probably going to be who won. But who knows? Like I said, basic, basic game first. Then we get like more experienced devs from Fiverr onto this and help and hopefully not create spaghetti coding <laughs> because I'm going to be um, saving multiple versions of the game as I'm dealing with, you know, Fiverr devs, just in case spaghetti coding becomes a thing, I can undo it and go back to a, the basic version and hire somebody new onto that. But right now I want after the basics, basic creating of everything, I want to find one dev and stick with that one dev only. So, well, that one coder, developer, et cetera, et cetera, and just deal with, with them, you know, work together into making this game, you know, come true. And 
hopefully if I do create a more basic starter world, I can get it out to you guys. If it becomes too much for me financially, I will start a Patreon. With that said, I'm going to end it out there. Hope you guys enjoyed. And to then, peace out. Give me feedback. Feedback, please.